the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. So number one, the first platform that allows the church to reveal Christ is prayer. Number two, are we together? The second dominion system allocated for the revelation of the life and the power of Christ by the church is called productivity. Please write it down. This is very important. Productivity. There is a dimension of the revelation of the life, the power and the grace of the Christ that is only manifested through the instrument of productivity. When God made man, Adam, he gave him the blessing and he said it this way be fruitful multiply he said replenish subdue have dominion productivity is very important when believers do not make their impact known and by extension the impact of Christ known by their level of productivity to the sociological environment, then Christ will not be revealed. More than just praying in tongues in church, more than just falling under the anointing, we must translate the spiritual possibilities we have received to become value systems and products and services that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization. That is the birthing and the revelation of glory. The church will remain a place that looks like a nuisance to society until they can see the blessings of our praying in tongues, the blessings of our word study. Isn't it amazing that we are full of activities from week in up and week out? And it's amazing that those who bring value to the social economy of a territory are seldom Christians. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit is not as a healer. It's as the spirit of creativity. Bringing light out of darkness. To who are the who? Confusion and chaos. And the spirit of God. Hovered round the face of the deep. And God said, light be. And he saw that it was good. The first good thing recorded in scripture came on account of light. Are we together? This is very important. The Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the begotten, full of grace and truth. You only behold what is being manifested. We must trust God for grace. We must trust God for grace. We should see believers the most blessed people, not from a carnal standpoint, the most productive people in society should be those who are of the church. It is proof of the advantage and the value. Nobody can just come and shut a church because you will show how the people in that church are contributing to the GDP of a territory. We are not just talkatives. No. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The definition of darkness is a territory without us. We culture the moral values. We culture the advancement that you shut the church for 24 hours. A territory should go into disarray. If a territory is still normal when the church is shut, it's proof we are not doing anything. Productivity. There is a dimension of competence and excellence that must come from the church. You have a restaurant as a Christian. That's not, you, you should not be the one who opens by 
12 in the afternoon and closes by 5 in the evening and believe you will lead the field. It won't work that way. We must be productive. I cast the spirit of laziness in the name of Jesus. Let me say this respectfully so and let me admit to you. Mediocrity and low level of productivity is a plague that is upon us, the middle belt. Now, I, I must say this. This is an uncomfortable truth, but it's true. We must trust God for grace. For some reason, it looks like our cultural context has found its way to make mediocrity and laziness comfortable. Consoled by the fact that vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. We must wake up. Otherwise, there will rise another Pharaoh who does not know Joseph. And the sons of the kingdom will be bent into servitude. Are we together? Laziness is one thing that both God and Satan agree that is useless. Whether you serve God or serve Satan, in any case, you cannot be lazy. So we must trust God for grace to wake up. Be productive. Are we together? Don't sell fake things inferior things christians are the ones who cheat people the most it's wrong it should not be so i'm praying tongues and cheat people you you give people things that are outdated and no 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 maintain a standard of quality the spirit of god came upon bizalel and it brought forth creativity productivity is very very powerful are we still together hallelujah I found a scripture that I will read for you and it blessed me so much. 1 Kings chapter 7. Please let's hurry up so we maximize time. 1 Kings chapter 7. I'll read from verse 13 and 14. Now look up please. This is the building of Solomon's temple. Let me show you the power of productivity and the power of competence. And King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. Tyre was the business hub of the then world. Next verse. The Bible says this Hiram was the son of a widow of the tribe of Naphtali. He said, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass. And he was what? Filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work. The Bible starts by telling us his background. A widow's son. No advantage. But his competence grew him to a point where his domain was the palace. When you serve kings, you will eat with kings. You are not productive until kings call you. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. It says, arise, shine. For your light is come and the glory of God is risen upon you. I like to quote it from Amplified. It says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light. For darkness shall cover the earth, the Bible says, and gross darkness the people. Then it says, but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles, Gentiles will come. There is a level of light that when you have, you don't look for people again. You become so compelling. They will give every excuse to be with you. Gentiles will come to your light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising. I was very blessed when the daughter of the man of God, you know, that little girl, and you can see the kinds of songs that she's singing. Imagine that this lady becomes consistent in the music ministry. By the time she's 20, she would be a global voice. And then people will come and say they are lucky. That's always what we say when we see competent people. Who is this that came from nowhere? Let me tell you, nobody comes out of nowhere. When David is, when David is in the cave of Adullam, you may not see him, but he is there. When David is at the backside killing lions and bears, you may not be there to capture it, but he is there having his track record. There is always a day in every man's life called the season of appearing. Until then, you stay 
until then you walk. I'm encouraging some of us who are in ministry. Leave this thing of trying to look for open doors. Doors are not closed. It is your door that is closed. And it was closed by God to keep you in training. When the season comes, the doors open. You are in business, sit down. Promise yourself that you will never stand before your destiny helpers and have them ignore you. You will be too competent to be ignored. If you have to call the attention of men to your competence, it's proof you are not good enough. Your light should be so bright, it should be impossible to be ignored. Number three, can we hurry up? The third platform. Now, please, lend me the next 10 minutes of your attention, please, inside and outside. I want you to listen very, very carefully. I'm taking out time to preach because this is my own state. I'm pouring my heart into this thing because permit my bias. I know there are people following from around, but please, let me just do this thing. I love my state. This is plateau. I mean, <laughs> praise the Lord. I'm sure somebody will kill chicken and give me for this. This wonderful, I'm joking, I'm joking. The third platform, please, I want you, anything that distracts you now is a spirit. Just listen to what I'm about to tell you because what I'm about to reveal is a serious issue. The third platform that allows believers to manifest the power, the life of the kingdom and reveal the Christ is called wealth. Write it down. Don't assume you know what I'm talking about. Just write it and listen to me. Wealth. This subject has been persecuted greatly. Either because of ignorance or because of the approach, especially around the Pentecostal and the charismatic circles. There has been the, the communications of wealth from a carnal and a fleshly standpoint. That, that is all about just massaging the lust of people. Are we together now? And so at the end of it, you do not have people who are kingdom driven. Their approach is simply a, a trying to create resources just to feed the flesh. Please, this is not what we are talking about here. You will never find access to the corridors of power within any sociological space if you ignore the reality of the abundance of the kingdom believers wake up the days that we live in we require people who love god and are strategic enough the subject of wealth is not about prosperity the subject of wealth is a time redemption strategy we are mandated to redeem time and one of the ways we redeem time is to sustain the economic wherewithal to stop wasting time. It takes time to know God. It takes time to serve God. It takes time to build the children to love God. And if we spend our time looking for money, we will be there looking for money while the devil looks for our children. We'll be there looking for money while the devil destroys our generation. Respectfully speaking, this is what is happening in the western world. Satan patiently grew with their children. Knowing that their fathers and their grandfathers would never bow to Baal, Satan left them and went to meet the now presidents of nations while they were 8, 10, 11 and patiently grew with that generation. Now there is a generation that does not serve the God of their fathers. We rebuke this over just in the name of Jesus. Look at me. Not being wealthy is wickedness just be patient i will explain to you it's, it's not just about no car no house when you understand the agenda of the kingdom you understand the world of men you understand systems of dominion and government you will know that being poor is a misdeed to the revelation of the christ two scriptures number one proverbs chapter 22 we we'll read verse 2 and then we'll go to verse 7 I believe that in this conference there are financial apostles in the name of Jesus that God is going to be raising. Not people who serve Baal, not people who go around making noise. People who understand the kingdom assignment that is tied to the supplies of the spirit. Proverbs 22 and verse 7. Please read with me. Ready? Read. Want to read? 
The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. Very interesting scripture. The Bible never said God made them rich or made them poor. God made men. They separated him themselves to become rich and poor. Now here's the scary verse, verse 7. One, two, three, just. One more time, please. Keep this scripture here. Joss, Nigeria, Africa. This will be the key to our dominion or the key to our slavery. The Bible says it is a law in the world of men that the rich will always rule over the poor and that whoever is on the side of the borrower must become slave to the lender. This is a statement that has no bias and no sentiment attached to it. That means when Satan wants people to become slaves, he doesn't make them slaves by making them slaves. He makes them slaves by making them borrowers. Please listen. Listen. This is a very powerful scripture. The rich unbeliever will rule over the poor prayer warrior. The rich anything will rule over the poor there are people whose properties have been collected by wicked people and because they do not have the economic stability to defend their cause, they lost things. I made up my mind as a minister of the gospel that I will never raise a people who are just anointed and spiritual. I believe in influence. I believe in the power of economy and supplies in kingdom advance. I'm friends to many people. I don't fight politicians. I don't fight. You touch me, both God and men will deal with you. That's a powerful revelation because in this world, there is no such thing as justice truly. You create your own. Let me, let me not get into trouble. But I want you to believe this and believe it truly. You need God and you need men. Do not fight influence. Don't see wealthy people and just bless them and, and say everybody is a thief, wicked people. No. There are people who have been blessed through the dignity of kingdom integrity. And you will need them. The body of Jesus is hanging on a tree. No prayer warrior could bring it down. It took a man of wealth called Joseph of Arimathea to use his influence with Caesar to bring that body down. Wealth played a role in your salvation. The tomb that Jesus was buried was not for government. It was for Joseph of Arimathea. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are people, there are children today who have no business going to useless schools. But that's what the, the money their parents had could afford. Are we together? You go to a school where the child does not even know what he's learning. They discuss what they are learning with the teacher and the teacher is not sure. And the student is correcting the teacher and they are arguing and that ends the lecture. This is why you see someone become an adult and is unnecessarily dull. It's not that they are dull. I mean, what, that's, that's the product of the background. That you can go to a school where you are sure that they are not only giving your child secular education, but the values of the kingdom. A school where you have night vigil before resumption. Part of the requirements is not masters and PhDs, your spiritual stand. And the proprietor has the economic wherewithal to outsource spiritual people. The name of Jesus is heavy. It takes resources to lift it. Please understand this. There are many men of God today who cannot pray well because of economic vicissitudes. The pastor wants to pray and is aware that they need to buy a new generator. Where will he get five million to get a mechano generator? 
and he goes to pray, well intentioned, and he's there for three hours, strolling around. Oh God, you called me. I'm sure of this. You see, you look, at, look at the amount of time that is being wasted in that discussion. Whereas he would have been praying for something more productive. What is wrong with God raising people to say, Pastor, please save yourself this trouble. We will commit ourselves to helping you while you commit yourself to the ministry of the word and prayer. Please don't say it does not matter. There are members who cannot listen to a teaching because their rent is due. And while they are sitting there, the landlord is at the other side and is looking at them. Are we together? And, and we say it does not matter. What, what, what do you mean it does not matter? Of course it matters. Listen. Hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. The only reason why Israel, God's covenant people, will go into Egypt is hunger. Genesis 42 verse 1 and 2. Don't forget this scripture for as long as you live. Please give it to us very quickly. Genesis chapter 42. Please look up. It's projected. Let's just work with time. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt. There was corn. But the problem is the location. Egypt. He said unto his sons. Why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. He said, behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down tether and buy for us from thence that we may live. Even a prophet would die when there is no corn. A prophet sends his future to the place of bondage because he needs corn. There are marriages that should not have happened. Is this search for corn that created those ungodly alliances. There are people like Jonah. They know where God sent them to. But because they need to stay where there is corn. They have gone out of the will of God. There are people today who should not have died. Cheap medical attention just for next to nothing. And they died like chickens. And we say, how can I allow Sharia? Remember, I'm speaking from a standpoint of love. I will never forget the day that our precious Josmine Market was burned to ashes. As it went down, the economy of many went down, even till today. But there's an army rising up. There's an army rising in this city there's an army rising up they will break, break every, every chain, chain break every chain break every chain listen to me i say it by the spirit there will be people who will rise from this city in the spirit and the power of nehemiah and they will repeal they will rebuild the economic destiny and heritage of this city. It is true. Some of them are politicians. Some of them are bankers. Some of them are men of God. But an agency they cannot explain. They will come under the influence of it. And there will be a clarion call. The sons and daughters of the land. Both the ones who are within and afar off. There will be a convergence. And they will come and rebuild the plateau again to become God's own state. Please sit down. I hear the chains only. Hallelujah. We need resources. There are many people here who are in health conditions that have nothing to do with sickness we think about money so much we become sick are we together we have to be very honest about this while we sat down and we were watching the video of the medical outreach it took resources not just desire 
It took resources to make this happen. Have you been before someone and said, ah, yeah, I wish I had money. You have the heart. So Satan will not allow the resources to enter your hand because he knows. We need an apostolic move of financial empowerment. Men and women with the paradigm of the kingdom. Not just people carrying money and, and making noise. And I'm not, We're not just talking of thieves and crooks. No, we're talking of wealth with the dignity of kingdom integrity. Men and women with financial intelligence and anointing on it. Who will invade the socio-economic space of this city and bring this city to its Sabbath? It will happen, and it will happen by the Spirit. A day will come where the sound that was heard, the Bible, the Bible talks about the the sound of of languishing and the sound of pain no more being heard within a city. The only shout that will be heard in the plateau is the shout of joy and victory. The shout of the king. A day will come when on a weekday you will tell your family nobody is going anywhere today. We are worshipping the Lord. You have the resources to pay for your excuse. Hallelujah. Yes. All this unless one of my dear people in the ministry would say that prosperity will reduce your prayer points and increase your prayer life. It's amazing. It's amazing the content of our prayer points. You go to pray for six hours. I agree, but what were you saying? The real prayer was 30 minutes out of the six hours. I believe in empowerment. I have seen the value and the benefit. When wealth comes into the hand of one who loves Jesus and understands the purposes of the kingdom, it's a weapon of mass destruction in the camp of the enemy. Hallelujah. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man? Look up now. I have to say this to round this up. What shall it profit a man? So he's speaking prophet and he's speaking men. What shall it profit a man if he gains, that's business, gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Many of you have followed my teachings and you've heard me say it again and again. The battle for wealth is the battle for your soul. A realm will come where you don't use money again. You use your soul to pay for things. Now, the economy of Babylon is that you increase as your soul decreases. You can know you are fraternizing with Babylon because the higher your wealth increases, the more your spiritual life goes down. The one thing Satan will not allow is for you to prosper even as your soul prospers. That one is impossible. That the wealthier you are becoming, the more yielded you are. No way. Satan will not allow it. So there will always be a deal Bow to me and I will give you the wealth of the cosmos. But there is a generation of people who will not bow to Baal. And yet they will access the resources. I hope you know that when I talk of kingdom wealth, I'm not talking of money to eat and money to build a house. If all you have is a car and your small estate, you are not wealthy. You are wealthy only when no amount invested in the kingdom becomes an inconvenience to you. That you are so wealthy that no financial demand becomes an inconvenience to you. We're not talking of some selfish, individualistic, small car, one estate. You are poor. If all you have is money, you are poor. We're talking of a heritage of advancing the cause of the kingdom. I hear the chains only. Can I give us the last one as we pray? Break every chain. 
Remember Haggai chapter 1 and verse 8. It was a prophecy that prophet Haggai brought. I just felt to just add this. Haggai. It's amazing that those who spoke about this prosperity were prophets, not business people. Haggai 1 verse 8. Go up the mountain. Look up please. He said bring wood. You get wood in the forest, not the mountain. So when he says to go up the mountain and bring wood, he's speaking about a mystery. Enter the systems, the seven mountains of the cosmos, the mind control platforms. Go there and through creativity and value, bring forth the resources and then build my house with it. You don't get wood from the mountain. You get wood from forest. Now he's saying this kind of wood that will be used to build the house of God. Don't go to the forest. Go up the mountain. The same mountain that the Bible says the mountain of the Lord's house will be above it. He's talking of the strata of human activities. Enter the systems. And through your value, exchange it for the resources that you can bring to the house of God. And build him a house that he would be glorified there. Please hate poverty. Not just by shouting it around, but by sitting down to say, Lord, if I have suffered, let my child not go through it. There are people who sat down worrying till they died. There are people who were driving and they did not know when a tree was in front of them. They were thinking and died. Do you not know poverty is a sword? It can kill. There are many books today that have been written. And God told the writers that the books will go to the ends of the earth. It has not gone out of their villages. Because of resources. There are many foundations, some in this place, that would have been given wings if there was the wherewithal, economically speaking. Hmm. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. That's what is happening to the plateau from this conference. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Number four. The last system by which we reveal Christ. And we manifest his glory within a territory. It's called the supernatural. Please pay attention. Just a few minutes and we're done. I gave us four keys. By which the church reveals Christ. Territorially speaking. Number one. I said. That it is a ministry of prayer. Number two. Productivity. Number three. Wealth. The availability of resources. That give us the leverage to speak the purposes of God. And then number four. The supernatural. Please I want you to listen. This is very very important. Psalm 92 verse 10. Can you pray one minute while you are turning to that scripture. Hmm. But my horn shall thou exalt. A horn is a symbol of authority. It says my horn shall thou exalt. Like the horn of a unicorn. Look at me. The horn of a unicorn never touches the ground. Even when his head is in the ground. The horn is always on top. You shall anoint me in the similitude of a unicorn. And it says I shall be anointed with fresh 
oil. To anoint means to ordain into a possibility. The anointing is an ordination. It's more than a smearing with oil. An ordination, an initiation into a realm of spiritual possibilities. Please look at me. Christ is only glorified when the works of Christ are done. If it is the Lord's doing, then it must be marvelous in our eyes. You don't clap for me for walking. It is human to walk. I don't deserve a round of applause for walking because all men walk. But when a man flies, that is a dimension that is not affordable in the economy of men. You must have outsourced an agency and an intelligence that is higher than that which is given to men. There is a dimension of the wisdom, the power, the glory of God that must be revealed in this age, here and now. Principalities and powers brought to their knees an effulgence of the life, the glory of Jesus. The first miracle of Jesus was performed in the city of Cana of Galilee. It was the turning of water to wine. It says this beginning of miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples and he manifested his glory. The glory of God is the Greek word doxa. The Hebrew word is kabod. The weightiness of a man. The full essence, the multifaceted dimensions of that man being revealed is called his glory. Please hear me. There is a dimension of the glory and the power of God more than creativity, more than intelligence, more than value, more than a socioeconomic advantage. We must introduce the spiritual advantage that the believers have. We are not ordinary people. It's not a preacher's note. It's reality. Every territory has forces that be. The Bible lets us know that there are forces that reside within the heavenlies that manipulate the activities of men. Please look at me. Men are only puppets to the spirits that manipulate them. If your destiny helper refuses to come and help you, he's only a puppet to an influence that is strengthened by an altar. That is created by a covenant. There is an advantage that can be outsourced to intelligence. That can release your helpers to you. Please listen to me. The realm of the spirit controls this realm. Find a way of indoctrinating yourself to believe this truth. Nothing just happens. Can you say that with me please? Nothing. Your car didn't just get missing. No. Your son didn't just turn into an arm robber. Your daughter didn't just turn into a prostitute. Your church didn't just pack up. No. Tragedies are programmed. Please listen to me. Tragedies are programmed. The Bible takes us to the book of Job. Now, theologically speaking, Job is a very interesting book. The author of Job is still a contention. And where it really lies, as far as the chronological arrangement of scripture, is still a debate today. It is believed that it's still sandwiched somewhere between Genesis 1 and the last chapter. But the Bible, whoever is the writer of Job, had the privilege to communicate to us from the standpoint of one who was seeing from the realm of the spirit and then the standpoint of one who was a man and the bible starts by telling us that there was a man called Job, and then he tells us the spiritual credentials of such a man that he was a man that feared god and eschewed evil are we together who would offer sacrifices in advance for his children this man had children and he had his estate he was the wealthiest man in the east then once upon a time, 
The Bible says a solemn assembly was called in the heavenlies. And Satan was part of that delegation. And he came and the Lord said, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Satan began to speak. It was from that scripture we see that Satan was testifying. That it's possible that a man can be so fortified. He will come and not be able to access him. Satan is confessing before God. That Job was so fortified spiritually. I came but I could not penetrate him. That scene changes. And the next thing we see is a plethora of catastrophe coming upon a man. In one day, he loses his estates, loses his children. The only thing he had was his health and his wife. Then we see that his health starts deteriorating. The hospital will call it high blood pressure. And they are right based on what the machine and education said. But the realm of the spirit says it is a programming the conclusion of a discourse. Are we together now? What happened that 2019 was such a year of suffering and hardship for me? Maybe it's how Nigeria is. No, sir. It's a programming. The realm of the spirit, Hebrews 11, gives us a mystery in verse 3. That everything that appears is a child. That the mother that holds that pregnancy is called the realm of the spirit. Nothing just appears until it is birthed. What you call creation in this realm is simply transportation from the realm of the spirit to this realm. So when a man is favored, it did not just happen. Realities were manipulated and finished from the realm of the spirit. My Bible says from the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. Finished. It's amazing how many things have been finished. The messianic prophecy, Isaiah 61, says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has ordained or anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. The Bible says he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Now watch this. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison. If I look at you and I say you are in prison, will you agree? Won't you ask me to go to the hospital? You are alive. You are free, but you are bound. It's the years of your life that will show you you are bound. You are, the only thing increasing in your life is your age. But nothing else is growing. It's proof that you are bound. The Bible says there is an engracing that can open that door. Are we together? There are families where the women feed the men. If you like travel to America, you will sit there for 10 years and return back to look like yesterday. There are people who have served in our region, occupied offices of honor, but in old age have been reduced to look like yesterday. It's a spirit. I hope you are not taking what I'm saying personal because it's true. There are people who win but never finish. They never finish. I was told of a lady who collapsed while they were about to join them. The man wanted to faint. He had suffered for many years, lobbying for approval for his wife. This guy is now dressed with his necktie and just to say, I do, the lady collapses. They said it was a health condition. Well, I'm telling you that the realm of the spirit is alive. There is a reason why people run away from you. When you are in trouble, sicknesses come. When the money finishes, it just goes like that. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? And canst thou establish the dominion thereof? Favor is a spirit. It can come and call its kind to you. Hardship is a spirit. It can rest on you and drive every good thing from you. Hardship as a spirit knows when an alert enters your account and it will not rest till you suffer. That's why it looks like everybody is watching you. It's just when the arrears comes that your father becomes sick, your mother becomes sick, your elder brother becomes sick, then your car will hit a mopole. Are you seeing those kinds of things? They will just say, come out and sit on the ground first. 
You see, don't, don't, the Bible said, Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly. Don't, don't you read it in your, it's in your Bible. Job said, Thou shalt be delivered from five things. Yes, six things. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. That men can send words like an arrow and program a climate of disfavor upon a man. Are we together? Very beautiful lady. But the only person who will say you are good looking is a madman. Is that a testimony? This is how these spirits work. To finish your PhD and the only job for you is to manage in a security outfit somewhere. As a gate man. Well, it's better than nothing. Things must change this night. Oh. Please give me a few minutes because God wants to reorder things in our lives. Hallelujah. It looks like every evil looks for you. Every evil looks for you. Trails you like a guided missile until it finds you. When they are looking for an armed robber, they look at your face and say, wait here. You say me, I'm a pastor's child. They say, still wait here. Why must it be my face? You see how these spirits work? Already the embarrassment of being associated with theft, even if they say go, that suspicion is already an indictment on your reputation. Ah, but tonight, someone shout no way. No way. Shout it again, say no way. The Bible says you shall be called Beulah and Hephzibah. A city, the, the fragrance. He said, my, the smell of my son is like a field that the Lord has blessed. The day you are tired of your situation and you stop looking at life just from an academic standpoint, just from a sociological standpoint, the day you approach life from a spiritual standpoint, that's the day your liberty starts. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? You have to sit tonight. We have a few minutes. But you have to be angry. Lord, why is my life like this? I came here at Global Flames. There is a dimension of the Christ that is not revealed in and through my life. Something must change in my life. It takes that kind of anger. It's a war to them who are at ease in Zion. Hear me? Every challenge is at the mercy of the anointing that confronts it. The anointing is not generic. The anointing works like money. One thousand can give you breakfast, but it cannot give you a car. If it's a car you are looking for, you will need more of that amount. Oh, your lifting has come. Oh, your lifting has come. Oh, Give me two minutes. We are going to pray. Please let me have four or five gentlemen. I want to show you something. Come. It's not impartation. Just. <laughs> Please come. Please watch my illustration and never forget it. Some of you stand here. Just stand facing me. Now watch this. Everyone please look at this. I want to show you a scripture that will bless you. The Bible says Paul was teaching. And this is what he said. Paul said, and God is able to make 
all grace everybody say all grace grace is the generic name given to every possibility that can be given to man only routed through the office of the Christ is called grace it's not just limited to its redemptive potential the generic name for every possibility that comes from the Christ to man is called grace anointing is grace favor is grace speed is grace are we together so when the Bible says all grace that means every possibility I call them possibilities you may call them results every result in this kingdom please look up there is a grace dimension that is responsible for it are we together now speed in this kingdom is governed by a grace when you find the grace that controls speed look up please some of you who know cars very well how many of you know that there are fuses and ICs in cars that control certain things when a light goes down usually you would go and check what fuse or what IC and sometimes you see it burnt you buy a new one and fix and the result shows is corrected now for every physical outcome there is a grace please understand what I teach you so the possibilities that are in men is not just dependent on the love of Christ is dependent on the graces they have accessed you can know the grace on a man by the results that he commands and graces are in levels and in dimensions you can have a higher level of the same grace for instance the healing grace you can have different levels of the same grace and then you can have dimensions of grace watch this i can have a grace for healing and not have a grace for favor watch this my physical result i will always be whole and healthy and when i pray for you even when you fall even if i pray for prosperity what will come on you is the healing grace because that's what i have just because you fell you will start seeing results in the healing area but not the because i do not have it watch this i can be a healing evangelist and yet even my church members on my birthday they will forget it's not forgetfulness it's the result of absence of that grace that's how the absence of it works that you are not remembered because there is a book of remembrance in the spirit i hope you know that the book of esther teaches us that there is a book of remembrance where the deeds of men are archived and chronicled and that it can be opened and visited so whatever makes men forget you is not their brain is that the grace to remind them is not on you please understand what i'm sharing with you was it not an anointing that came upon the wine presser and said king i remember this day now i have a grace for healing and then i come for a conference like this and although i'm anointed so we think but my results show that there is a dimension of christ that cannot be revealed in me that means if i study this preacher i cannot see that god gives men favor i can't see christ revealed as the one who brings favor because that dimension is not captured in his experience and it's dangerous because if this man remains that lopsided he will build a theology and limitation to mean god cannot flow this way are we together now watch this come this is the grace for favor have you seen i was always anointed but another dimension of grace has been added you will see it in my physical results my neighbor who has been with me for five years and never gave me a chicken although he has poultry will suddenly remember me after service it's not about chicken the physical realm is answering to something that is there watch this an uncle who forgot you suddenly says i don't something told me no something told me this is the grace i'm showing you how it works but even that is not enough because there is a grace for influence when you don't have that grace you are favored but you will still be small there is a grace that lifts you above your equals 
Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your equals. Now, I come for a meeting like this. Come now. This is the grace for influence. Watch this. Are you seeing? As a pastor, as you are fishing these graces through hunger and faith, the results are showing in your life. Now, you can sit in pride forever and not carry these graces. The graces are for the taking, but there are rules. Impartation is one of them. And impartation does not flow from colleague to colleague. It answers to honor. Genuine honor. Now watch this. Assuming I want to pray for a politician and I don't have a grace for influence, I can lay my hands on him and say in the name of Jesus, I speak to you. Excel politically. He can fall and roll. Let me tell you the truth in the name of honesty. He didn't get anything. He will only be healthy. If you poison him, it will not work because that's the grace I carry and that's what came on him. But as far as breaking through the spiritual holes of the governmental systems, I don't have the grace for it. But when that grace is here, you can turn your usher into a governor. See, there is a grace that makes men. I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. From whence cometh my help? He said, my help cometh from the Lord, the maker. He doesn't only make the heavens and the earth. He makes men. Follow me and I will make you. When you carry the maker's grace, you don't invite millionaires. You don't invite men of God. You make people. Are we together? Now, you can have all these things and still be foolish. Because, come, the spirit of wisdom Remember, this is one of the grandest operations of the spirit. Doth not wisdom cry. He said, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. With me are riches, wealth and honor, yet durable riches and righteousness. Wisdom. This was the spirit that was upon the father when they were founding the earth. The wisdom of God. You find out you are doing very well except that your decisions continue to betray your knowledge of God. And then through impartation. Now notice, hold my hands guys. Notice. Are you seeing how heavy you are becoming in the realm of the spirit? This is what it means. The weightiness of a man is the graces upon you that make you heavy. It is because of this weight that the anointing breaks the yoke. There is a yoke but the weightiness, you are now outsourcing these graces. Please watch this. Now, everyone is exposed to the same situation in life. Your bailout is the graces you are carrying. You can be in joss and the city will not open for you. But someone will come with this battalion of graces. And the two lift gates of the city open. Not just because you are anointed. You are a carrier of these graces. Listen, this is what defines our possibilities in this kingdom. Every challenge is relative to the graces you carry. And tonight, let me tell you, one of the things that must come upon you is a duplication of these graces. Let's go. Watch this. Sir, Saul, the son of Kish. The father's donkey is missing. And now they go searching for the donkey. And after three days, they couldn't find the donkey. You know they would have returned back and written a book and said donkeys cannot be restored. Except that one advised them and said, let us go to a man. There is a man. Every grace comes from God through men to men. Please understand what I share with you. This will be a glorious way of finishing 2019. The fire you receive from this conference 
by the end of January 2020, you've recovered 10 years in one. I'm not motivating you. No. One day go better is nonsense. That's why sayings. Time does not change things. Time only reveals. It takes you obtaining the requisite level of intelligence and the grace dimension that your results depend upon. This is what changes your life. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Pasca Matata Branda Catecapo Catapranda Catapa Cotosco for Breca Teca Necapa. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. Grant